Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm okay, Brian. We're continuing on the Kentucky Derby Trail, making our first visit to Tampa Bay Downs for the Sam F. Davis. Wow, what a field of 12. First, first visit of the year to, to beautiful Tampa Bay Downs. One of my favorite smaller tracks, by the way, yeah. Matt. It's, it's, a, it's a gem down there on the west coast of Florida. And yeah, as you mentioned, uh, this Sam F. Davis field, let's pull it up. Uh, we actually have Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks preps on a nice uh, card that includes four stakes races on Saturday at Tampa Bay Downs. But this Sam F. Davis is a uh, tough nut to crack. If you can get the winner in here, Matt, you're doing well. 12 horses. I don't think there's a standout in the bunch. And uh, without further ado, let's start from the rail. Uh, Matt, the one is a horse called El Principito. And I think he's going to be a pretty big long shot in here. Yeah, I think with the field of 12, Brian, there are uh, a number of horses who are legitimate long shots in here. And and this El Principito um, broke his maiden at first asking, which was nice, except that it was in a $25,000 claiming race. The the uh, connections then have put the horse in, in five pretty tough spots. Uh, uh, a bunch of stakes races and allowance and the best he could do in any of them was a fourth place hey matt i i, I gotta mention last week we saw hades come out of a maiden claimer to begin his career speed on the rail and he burned us uh could happen again this horse has some speed coming out of a fourth by 14 lengths in the pasco i don't think so but uh you never know i just had to mention that uh Hey, last work last week it, it did get us pretty good. Number two is tireless, Matt. Number two is trained, of course, by Todd Fletcher. This son of not this time was an eight hundred and seventy-five thousand dollar yearly. And I don't know if he's lived up to those lofty uh, numbers uh, that he was purchased for yet. But uh, you got to respect Todd Fletcher and the Sam F. Davis, Matt. I counted Fletcher's won this race seven times. I got that same number, Brian, seven times for uh, Fletcher as he spreads his derby hopefuls out around uh, different tracks. Yeah, uh, certainly what you said. I don't know if this horse has lived up to that uh, a big auction price. Broke his maiden at Tampa in his fourth try. Yeah, actually, he started out on turf, did the Sun and Not This Time. Versatile Sire is not this time, but uh, his last two, second and a first on dirt. So he's only had two dirt races, first and second, and both. Last time was a three-quarter length win that you mentioned at Tampa Bay Downs. So not an overly impressive maiden win, but uh, could be on the improve for Pletcher. Always dangerous. Number three is Patriot Spirit. Matt, this is a stakes-winning son of Constitution. And I, that in itself seems like an oxymoron in that uh, he's a stakes winning son of Constitution, but he's been doing it sprinting. Now he finally stretches out for the Davis. He has been doing it sprinting and, and uh, uh, certainly he's done a good job sprinting. I think we'll talk about the pace as we go along in here, Brian. Uh, uh, fast pace expected in the Sam F. Davis and, and Patriot Spirit is certainly one of the horses that should be contributing to that fast pace. He won his debut by six lengths. Again, that was sprinting. Tried the Iroquois stretching out um, last year and finished sixth. Yeah, he tired in that one mile Iroquois. Now he goes longer here. He's coming out of a win in the inaugural at Tampa Bay Downs, uh, he was three to five that day in that six furlong race. That was his last race a couple months ago. A stakes win over the track. Number four, Crazy Mason, Matt. Crazy Mason is a son of coal front. Greg Sacco uh, brings him in, and, and he's been running at Tampa Bay Downs of late, and he's been running pretty well at Tampa Bay Downs of late. Yeah, he ser seems to have liked the trip to uh... – uh, Florida for Greg Sacco, who has who has done well at uh, Tampa the last two years, a Monmouth Park uh, uh, regular. Um, Crazy Mason last time out 
won an allowance race at Tampa, stretching out to two turns. Before that, we mentioned the inaugural when uh, we were talking about Patriot Spirit. Um, Crazy Mason was second to the horse. But I like the fact a lot, you know, with that, you know, tightener and then running well, uh, going two turns. Yeah, he's had two nice wins over the track. That's his advantage. I will say before he got to Tampa Bay Downs, another horse in the race beat him pretty badly up north. Uh, but uh, two two good wins over the track. It's always something to think about. I think the five horse on our list, Matt, is a pretty interesting horse. Uh, this is another son of not this time called No More Time. No More Time. Uh, we had talked about a little bit because he was scratched out of last week's Holy Bull. Uh, two starts back, he romped in a nice one-mile maiden win at Gulfstream Park. Last time, Matt, no more time was rank early in the Mucho Macho Man. He'll need to turn it around from that fifth-place finish, but he was beaten less than four lengths, and if he had some issues in there then he, that he can turn around, maybe no more time is one to watch here in the, in the Davis. Yeah, maybe he's going to have to turn it around for sure, Brian, because uh... – the Mucho Macho Man was anything but flattered by the performance of four horses from that race in the Holy Bull. Pretty much none of the four did anything. Yeah, I, I think there was at least one scratch, of course, no yeah, more time. But, but, but you're right. Yeah, certainly Otello and uh, a couple others out of that uh, Mucho Macho Man were not uh, very competitive last time in the, uh, in the Holy Bull. Matt, let's take a look at the speed before we talk about six or the pace, the projected pace from Timeform US. And number six is a horse who should buy for favoritism. His name is Agate Road. Agate Road? Agate Road. Agate Ag Road. Agate Road. Agate Road. Son of Quality Road. Agate Road. Um, if you look at the Timeform US pace projector here, Matt, he's not even making the page first off we see the fast pace button lit up there in red for the sam s davis a mile and a 16th race of course two turns at tampa bay downs you got the three who we already talked about patriot spirit uh, i'm surprised the one el principito is not a little bit closer i think he could show speed from the rail uh, we haven't talked about change of command but uh, way way back is the six i get road trained by that guy again todd fletcher yeah, so far back that there's just that little note down down on the bottom of the pace projector page saying that there are two deep closers. That means they are pretty deep deep closers. Yeah, this is one of the interesting facets for me about this Sam F. Davis is that there are two horses in this field that ran in the Breeders' Cup juvenile turf, and Agate Road is uh, uh, – is one of them. He certainly has had a very nice record um, in running on, on the grass. He won the Pilgrim, a great stakes race on the grass, um, and now going turf to dirt with a horse that has shown some promise. I guess the connections are saying, hey, let's see if uh, he might be a derby contender. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there, there's pedigree there to think that he can take to the dirt. It's on a quality road. And he actually did uh, run his first race. It was a race taken off the turf at Saratoga, but he was second by a nose. It was kind of a slow mile maiden race at Saratoga, but he just missed. So he showed some potential on the dirt before running four solid stakes, uh, four solid races on the turf, the last three being stakes races. He got a prep since the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, where he didn't run all that bad, by the way. And uh, he was second at a stakes race last time at Gulfstream Park. A rallier, turf to dirt, Pletcher, certainly a horse that we have to talk about here, Agate Road. The seven mat is Copper Tax, and the son of Copper Bullet uh, comes from us from Gary Capiano. And uh, Copper Tax is, is the winningest horse in the race, Matt, with five wins. Those five wins came in a row before last time failing in the Remsen at Aqueduct. Yeah, so another very interesting horse uh, talking about those uh, those past performances, Brian. Uh, and, and not only uh, did he win those five in a row, but he was a heavy, heavy favorite, odds-on favorite in all of those races, picking up uh, a, a stakes win at uh, Delaware Park, 
with a, a front end effort and then uh, winning the, the Lewis at Laurel with an off the pace finish. So you've got some versatility there and uh, you know, uh, but yeah, that performance, that sixth place in the, uh, in the Remsen sure got that winning streak to come grinding to a halt, but it was aqueduct and, you know, uh, horses don't always take to that track. Yeah, it was a muddy track that day and a good field that day going nine furlongs uh, in the Remsen. But uh, before that, yeah, I liked his two stakes wins, two different tracks. Like you say, he, he, he overcame uh, some things to get up in, in the Lewis and then in the Rocky Run, he was the easiest kind of winners. And a horse we talked a little bit about, Crazy Mason, was well back behind him in that Rocky Run. So Copper Tax, interesting horse for sure. Not sure if we could say the same about the Florida bred son of Gary D., his name is Ever Do It, Matt. Uh, maybe more speed to the field? Yeah. Uh, um, but coming to Tampa, I guess uh, trainer Kevin Rice uh, spends the winter at Tampa Downs, was a uh, maiden special weight winner at Tampa in his, uh, in his second try. Um, uh, uh, you know, but uh, for the second also in an allowance at Tampa, he was in that mucho macho man also and finished sixth. Yeah, he, he showed speed in the mucho macho man, but he faded well out of it to finish last, I believe. So ever do it looks like a legitimate long shot. Maybe some more pace, though. Uh, they had the nine, that time form U.S. pace projector. Let's throw that up one more time. Had the nine is one of the real pace factors in this predicted fast pace. And I, I think he's the other horse that will buy for favoritism with Agate Road. Uh, his name is Change of Command. He's a son of Into Mischief, Shug McGahee, Matt, and he was a high-priced yearling, and he's starting to come into his own. Yeah, that's for sure. Winning his last uh, last two races, that includes his maiden breaker at Gulfstream Park and an allowance race. Last time, that allowance, when we should note, came with first time Lasix. And we should also note that uh, showing speed the last time, maybe even more this time, getting blinkers on. Blinkers on. Yeah, that's interesting with the pace projection here. So uh, a, a horse who was a game winner last time after kind of uh, uh, an oppressive maiden win going shorter. Change of command. Uh, yeah, Shug McGahey. You always have to worry about these uh, Shug McGahey horses this time of year and change of command. Looks like a horse who could be moving forward at the right time, but he should get some money here. I'm not sure how much money West Saratoga will get, and, and that could be a mistake if they let the son of Exaggerator go too far back. You mentioned the Iroquois. Uh, I guess that was three starts back, a grade three race at Churchill Downs, and this horse was a good-looking winner of that. Uh, he's been beaten in his last two, but a graded stakes winner at a mile. I, I think you have to talk about West Saratoga in this field just a little bit. Yeah, I think you do, Brian. Uh, maybe, you know, with the way you describe it, he's got a little bit of back class that he can rely on. And West Saratoga is the only horse in this field that has any Kentucky Derby points. And, and he got, you know, I think he's got 11, uh, 10 from that win in the Iroquois. Yeah, we, we mentioned Agate Road being a graded stakes winner on turf. With Saratoga, I believe, is the only graded stakes winner on dirt in that Iroquois. He was fifth in the in the Breeders' Futurity, uh, really non-threatening at Keeneland after that. Last time he got a race over the track, and he kind of uh, uh, got to second on class, but that was a huge sprint performance by Bookham Dano, who's a really, really talented sprinter. But West Saratoga was 12 lengths back in the Pasco, so he'll have to show more in his second start of the year, but there are some things to like with West Saratoga. Uh, the 11, another long shot, a son of Bolt Doro Fulminio. Fulmin, oh, help me with the pronunciation, Matt. I think Fulminio. Fulminio, yeah. Well, after three turf races, he ran a decent race at the track, Tampa Bay Downs last time. He was uh, not beaten all that much by Crazy Mason. Yeah, a little, a little bit of similarity to, uh, uh, to Agate Road in that uh, he did run his first race on the dirt and and it was an okay kind of race but came back to um to run on the grass and he was in that pilgrim 
also and finished second to Agate Road, and he ran in the Breeders' Cup juvenile uh, juvenile turf, just like Agate Road did not run nearly as well as Agate Road did, however. Yeah, that, that was a kind of a funny uh, Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. It, even the horses at the back of the pack, like this one, wasn't beaten by all that much. But uh, he was uh, he was near the back in that race. And then last time, beaten by Crazy Mason. Of the two of them, I, I prefer Crazy Mason in here, the post position being part of that equation. But uh, maybe a long shot that you could at least consider throwing into your exotics. Number 12 is another horse who should get some money, Matt. Uh, you can tell by this morning line that we made here that uh, there's no real clear favorite. Uh, maybe the third choice, Elysian Meadows. Elysian Meadows is a son of City of Light, trained by Bill Mott. He's also a New York bred, Matt. He's also Ooh. undefeated coming from New York. Yeah, New York bred, undefeated, two for two for Bill Mott. Both wins uh, at Aqueduct uh, uh, with a maiden special weight and an allowance coming from off the pace. I think I would like him a little bit better, Brian, if he wasn't all the way out in the 12th post. The 12 hole's tough, especially when you're going two turns, a, a real jump up in distance for the first time. Uh, I do like the fact neither of his maiden wins were overly uh, impressive necessarily, but I do like the fact that he really rallied in the first race, which was six and a half furlongs. And last time he did show a little bit more pace and then was a game winner at six furlongs in that allowance race at Aqueduct. So an interesting horse stepping up into the Sam Map Davis. Wow, Matt, that's 12 horses wide wide open it'll be interesting to see our top picks i, I guess we know them but uh, it'll be interesting to see them on the show let's look at the philly race the philly race uh might have more say when we get to the kentucky oaks this is another point race another prep this is for the kentucky oaks this is a mile and 40 yards and this is the suncoast stakes matt we saw nest win this race a couple years ago we saw Royal Belta lose this race uh, more than a decade ago. There, there are some nice fillies that have come out in the Sun Coast, and we could be talking about another one here in the number four, Life Talk. Matt, Life Talk is a daughter of Gunrunner out of a Bernardini mare, Fletcher Rapoli, and she had a very nice two-year-old filly season. Yeah, there, there's there going to be no question about the favorite uh, in this race, as the morning line shows. Uh, Life Talk is going to be a, a heavy, heavy choice. Uh, last time was a front end winner of the of the Demoiselle, a Grade Two uh, race. Life Talk ran in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies and finished fourth. Before that, was third in the Grade One Frisette and was an impressive uh, maiden winner at Saratoga. So uh, plenty, plenty to like for this Pletcher run. Yeah, Life Talk, she's run five races. She ran five races as a two-year-old. They were all good, including the two maiden races at Saratoga. Just missed in her debut, then a romping win, as you mentioned, at Saratoga. I wasn't sure what to think of her out of her third of Frisette, uh, third in the Frisette, but it was off track. And the winner, of course, is just FYI. Both of those fillies went to California and ran well, just FY, just FYI, of course, clinched a championship by winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile. Phillies, but Life Talk ran a good race, fourth, uh, not beaten all that much in the Breeders' Cup. And then she came back and dominated the Grade Two Demoiselle gate, uh, gate to Wire. So Life Talk, obviously the one to beat here, Matt. But I do think we have an interesting field. Uh, there's some interesting Phillies at least to see if she's ready as a heavy favorite in her three-year-old debut. And we'll start on the rail because who could ask for Mo? is one of those interesting fillies a, a daughter of uncle mo trained by shug mcgahey matt she's done little wrong so far yeah absolutely uh looks looks like a good one good uh good breeding first in uh, maiden special weight at tampa in her uh, in her second start by six and a half lengths and it was going this mile and 40 yard distance yeah, she picks up Tyler Gaffleone here for the Sun Coast, one of uh, one of the top young riders in the country. Nice win over the track, this four hundred and fifty thousand dollar yearling. Uh, you know, she was beaten in that first race, that debut, but she was running well late in that seven furlong sprint. Uh, another Bernardini mare here, summer wind bred Cortland on this. This filly is supposed to be good, and her first two starts did little 
to uh, uh, take away from the fact that she could very well be a graded stakes winner. So she'll get some money. And I think the two power squeeze has to get some money too, Matt. This is a, this is a filly who, who should like uh, a distance of ground, a daughter of Union Rags who won the Belmont out of an awesome, again, mare. Jorge Delgado has this filly moving in the right direction for sure. Yeah, I agree with that, Brian. Uh, I took uh, Power Squeeze a few races to break her maiden special weight, uh, which she did at Delaware Park. But then most recently, a very nice uh, mile victory in a stakes race at Gulfstream Park going the one-turn mile. Yeah, that was a nice rally, too. She's a filly that uh, does not mind passing horses. She's improved with every start, and she just blew by the field in the cash run. Uh, at uh, Gulfstream Park last time. This is obviously tougher than the cash run, but a very nice win last time for Power Squeeze. Speaking of her as a horse that likes to come from off the pace, let's throw up that time form US pace projector now. Now uh, we have a, only a field of six, so that becomes a, a question of pace. And you see number five, Managing Mischief, who we're just about to talk about as the pace of the race, but then you got the favorite, uh, Life Talk, not far behind, sitting there in second. And then the two other horses who will be that uh, power squeeze and who could ask for Mo farther back in the pack early. That pace projection makes it look like maybe of the three favorites, Life Talk has a little bit of an edge there, Matt. All right, let's get back to the field. You saw the horse on the lead early in that time form, US pace projector was managing mischief. Uh, managing mischief is a daughter of Maximus Mischief. And uh, she is uh, one of two for trainer Tim Ham. Uh, Timothy Ham is uh, uh, also the trainer number three, America's Vow, who we'll talk about next. But Managing Mischief expected to be on the front end. She debuted at Saratoga, Matt, but she's uh, been running at Tampa Bay Downs of late. Yeah, Managing Mischief, uh, 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 yeah, uh, broke her maiden in her third try at Tampa Bay going six furlongs by a couple of lengths. It was a field of seven. Yeah, she showed speed and she's been sprinting. She said she's been only sprinting. So this one also two turns a mile and 40 yards, of course, at Tampa Bay Downs is two turns. This one will try to carry her speed, but uh, a couple good races over the track as she steps up in not only distance, but certainly steps well up in class. Her entry made is America's vow another constitution if you couldn't tell by the name Matt, this is a homebred for uh, for trainer tim ham and uh, she is coming off a big maiden win also at tampa bay downs big maiden win for sure brian by uh, by more than uh, seven lengths for america's vow uh, that came in her fifth start yeah, you got to wonder, Matt, because she had four starts where she really didn't show a whole lot. And the fact that she was four to five in this maiden race at Tampa Bay Downs makes that seven and a half length maiden romp last time look just a little bit more questionable because uh, for her to be four to five off the form coming in makes me think that she did not beat much and certainly will go way up in class here. Uh, the last horse in the field, Matt, that we haven't talked about, another horse with just a little bit of speed. I, I, I could see her sitting there. In fact, time form U.S. pace projector had her just off life talking. Third, early, short field, outside post is not a bad thing. Gorgeous girls, the son of Liam's map. There's that trainer again, Greg Sacco. This is a red oak homebred. She's only won one of five races, Matt, but she's kind of rounding into form at Tampa Bay Downs. Yeah, another one uh, uh, for Sacco that seems to be uh, uh, getting better as she has been running at uh, Tampa Bay Downs. Most recently was second in the Gasparillo, a seven furlong prep race for uh, this Sun Coast. Um, also has a third place in an allowance race at Tampa. Um, before that, tried tried the turf at Monmouth Park where she broke her maiden yeah yeah she she did nothing in that turf race i believe it was the salima uh but before that she she did as matt said broke her maiden um dirt at monmouth park uh since she's come to tampa bay downs though it, it's worth noting that that sprint there were some good horses in that allowance sprint she was third against the boys so she ran against the boys in an allowance race ran pretty well with her tactical speed 
then last time she was uh, um, a very good second in the Gasparilla, not far out of it, a, se- a stake sprint at, at Tampa Bay Down. So now she's moving up in distance, moving up in class a little bit, but good tactical speed with the filly well-versed over the track could be an interesting long shot in Saturday Sun Coast. All right, Matt, those are the Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks preps that we have uh, on Saturday at Tampa Bay Downs. They also have a couple of nice sprint stakes uh, where some good, good sprinters are going to be running in the Minaret and the Pelican. Uh, the stakes races are a little spread out. Actually, the Sun Coast is early in the card, race five, and then the Sam S. Davis is a little bit later in the card. Uh, the sprint stakes are in between as, as well as a few other races. Without further ado, uh, and by the way, if you haven't been to Tampa Bay Downs yet, get there because it's, it's, a, it's a great smaller track, as I said. But without further ado, Matt, let's get to our top picks for these two races. And I'm going to let you go first. We'll start with the boys in the Sam F. Davis. Absolutely, Brian. In that big field, and as we were talking about it, no particular – Heavy favorite in the field, but I got I got to go for a horse with a that's probably going to be a pretty good price. I am going to go with Greg Sacco in that race. I am picking uh, Crazy Mason with the hope that uh, uh, Tampa Bay has been to his liking that this is a horse that is getting better. I like his second in that inaugural and the way he improved going two turns in the allowance. Yeah, he, you can't fault his recent form at Tampa Bay Downs. But on the other hand, I'm picking a horse, another horse I think that'll have nice odds, who beat Crazy Mason pretty easily. Yes, it came a few races ago, uh, but uh, Copper Copper Tax, Matt, I, I, I just think he's a, a real nice horse. He won, He just missed in his debut, then he won five straight. He was doing it impressively. Yeah, it was in the mid-Atlantic. How good is the competition? But he was looking good doing it. I like the way he's won some of those stakes races in different ways. I'm going to draw a line through that, Remsen. It was a muddy track, nine furlongs, a tough field. I don't think there's anybody in, in here as good as Dornock or Sierra Leone or, or maybe even Drumroll, please, who was third in that Remsen. So I think a different track, a little bit shorter distance, and Copper Tax can get back to his winning ways. We have two horses with odds here, Matt, in a wide open race. We're going to try to beat those likely favorites. How about the Phillies in the Sun Coast? We have another, well, we have, this is the one probably heavy favorite in Life Talk. Yes. And, uh, you know, with a field of six, we're not going to be uh, getting big prices uh, like we're, like we picked in the Sam F. Davis. But even so, I'm going to try and uh, beat the favorite. I mean, she looks, you know, like she could be very tough, but we got seven to five in our morning line. Could even be lower than that. I'm going to go with the two horse power squeeze. I really liked that uh, performance in the cash run at Gulfstream Park. Yeah, if she runs back to the cash run, power squeeze can absolutely win this race for trainer Jorge Delgado. I am going to find bigger odds, though, Matt. I'm, I'm, I'm going with another long shot in here. I think Gorgeous Girl will have some real nice odds in the Sun Coast. And I just like the way, since she's gotten back to dirt, she's progressing in these sprints. I think she'll be involved in the race throughout, in the short field, outside post. I think she can move forward and pull off an upset. We saw last week a heavy Pletcher favorite come back in his three-year-old debut. Of course, I'm talking about fierceness, get beat at low odds. I don't think Life Talk will be... Uh, as low as fierceness was last week, but we certainly uh, uh, have more ammunition to go against the heavy uh, returning favorite here in the stakes race early on in three-year-old season. So we're both trying to beat Life Talk in the Sun Coast. All right, folks, that's our show. Matt, before we go, we got to get a parting shot from you, my friend. Okay, Brian, absolutely. We're continuing on the Kentucky Derby Trail. I think we're... uh, uh, Heading to New Orleans next weekend. I think the passing the milestone and moving into the 50 point uh, Kentucky Derby prep races already. Oh, Matt, we will be all over that card at New Orleans next week because the Risen Star, frankly, looks like the Kentucky Derby prep. It's pretty early to say that, but so many interesting horses are pointing for the Risen Star next week at Fairgrounds. 
throw in the Rachel Alexandra with some good fillies, and we'll have a lot to talk about on a big card next week at Fairgrounds. Folks, I want to thank you as always for watching Horse Center. We sure do appreciate it. Uh, subscribe to our channel here at YouTube uh, on the Horse Racing Nation channel if you haven't yet done that already. It really helps Matt and I out. Turn on the notifications so you don't miss another show. Leave us a comment, all of that good stuff. We do appreciate it. As we appreciate Candace Curtis, our friend in the home office for the race graphics she provides us, Timeform US for their great pace projections that we use each week. And of course, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there, our sponsor. Say goodbye to our friends out there, Matt. Goodbye, everybody. Good luck this weekend. Matt was a big winner last week uh, at, at Aqueduct. So uh, uh, hopefully he can continue that uh, streak going. But we want you to win out there. Good luck, everyone. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Center.